We recently got our hands on upcoming PS4 zombie survivathon Days Gone, trying to survive post-apocalyptic Oregon as Biker Deacon. Fun fact, he's voiced by Sam Witwer, who you might remember as Starkiller in The Forced Unleashed. <laughs> could you use a ride? Yes, I could. Thank you for finally offering. I'm Sarah. I'm Deacon. Oh. Well, sorry about the mess. Here then are some tips to tell you what the hell this game is and how to survive in it before it arrives on the 26th of April. <sighs> Come back later to finish burning out these nests. In the world of Days Gone, the virus-infected flesh-eating humans aren't known as zombies, but freakers. Probably because they, well, they can freak you the hell out. <laughs> The main type you'll be coming across are swarmers. These garden variety freakers can be found roaming the world alone and aren't too difficult to handle one on one. <laughs> However, as you've probably guessed by the name, they can swarm together into hordes. Uh -oh. And not like the cool horde in World of Warcraft. Am I right, orcs? Lokta Oga! <clears throat> anyway. You can avoid them completely, skirting around them with your stealth skills or using your bike to get their hell out of dodge. You will eventually have to deal with them though, and before that happens, your best bet is to stock up on ammo, clear out any nearby nests to reduce the number of zombies that could join in the horde, and put down some well-laid traps, because even with plenty of planning, these guys can still sneak up on you. Ah, ah, run! Get out! Run, Deacon! Ah. And this lot aren't the only ones you need to worry about. Keep your eyes peeled for newts, which are children infected with the virus. More fast and nimble than their adult counterparts, and liable to make you feel extremely guilty whenever you kill one. Although you will end up face to face with them many times, they tend to keep out of your way, preferring to stay up on roofs making horrible noises that you can hear from the street below. <laughs> oh, also, if this old E3 trailer is anything to go by, you'll likely come across freaker infected animals such as this grumpy looking rager bear. Back up. Nice and slow. Don't make it up. Yay! You fucking rippers, none of you are getting out of here alive. I tell ya, sorry, goddammit. Spread out, look around. There's a girl here somewhere. You wish only the monsters in Days Gone were the only monsters in Days Gone. But if zombie fiction has taught us anything, it's that people are the real monsters. That is to say, there are loads of other people trying to survive in the wild and not all of them are friendly. There are other groups of survivors all after the same resources and even after your hideouts, and most would rather kill you than share. So don't go running into any old settlement hoping to get a big hug. Worst of them all are the rippers from the Rest in Peace cult. These uninfected humans believe the infection to be a gift, see the infected people as something to worship, and think of other humans and civilization as a whole as something to be destroyed. You know, normal chill stuff. Helpfully though, they are easily identifiable as they shave their heads and scar themselves with the RIP acronym all over their bodies. Plus, rippers tend to be fairly loud when they're together, which makes it much easier for you to pick them out in the wilderness than it is for them to pick out you. you guys got that? Right then, move! What's that? <laughs> got you. Before you go off chasing freakers, bandits and cultists, you'll need to stock up on weaponry. Deacon carries around his pistol, but eventually you're going to need something more snazzy. We got our hands on a stealthy crossbow and found that firing machine guns in quick bursts was extremely useful in close quarters, or when dealing with a lot of enemies at once. I know where he's at. He's holding up! Move him! However, ammo is scarce, so your other best bet is making use of four very special weapons. Your mother fluffin' limbs. 
Unarmed, you can duck, dodge, kick, and roll your way out of a situation with your knife as a handy finisher, but you'll feel even more like a badass when you equip other melee weapons. Each has its own damage level, with the strongest we saw and our favourite being that old post-apocalyptic workhorse, a baseball bat with nails in it. <laughs> Don't mess with a classic. These can be crafted on the fly with any old baseball bat and nails you scrounge, and they can do some real damage. But beware, melee weapons also have limited durability and will quickly degrade, with the very real possibility of it breaking in the middle of a fight. <laughs> So, you either have to swap out nearly broken ones for newer ones, or do what we did and invest in the ability to fix with scrap ASAP. Guns with scarce ammo and melee weapons that fall apart aren't the only way to dispatch your enemies. First off, if a fight gets too much, running away is always an option, albeit not usually the most traditionally heroic one. Secondly though, and what really worked best for us, was to use stealth from the start. What? <laughs> Deacon has a decent array of under-the-radar takedowns, so if you're low on ammo or your beloved baseball bat is about to crap out on you, why not flank your opponents and take them down with your knife? <laughs> or, for instance, find yourself a bear trap and lure someone into it by throwing a rock. What is your problem? Oh, shh, shh, shh. There's something out there. Just a forest. It's a forest. Ah! 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 And the coast is clear. If discovered, or if you're one of those gamers for whom stealth is just too much sneaking around and not enough exploding, you can use projectile weapons such as pipe bombs. Here, catch! Or homemade Molotov cocktails to deal with multiple enemies at once, which you can rustle up on the fly just like your melee weapons. <laughs> These create a lot of chaos in which you can get the advantage, so make use of everything you have to hand. A map. Looks like they marked it up good. Speaking of having things to hand, gathering resources is key in Days Gone, for cooking up a tasty Molotov cocktail, for example, or for getting yourself fixed up. A lot of ammo left. Although resources are scarce enough that you should avoid burning through them all too quickly, we found that with a little care and some enthusiastic scavenging, the Days Gone universe provided all the gear and scrap we needed. As you explore, lots of goodies can be found lying around the place, or on enemies you defeat. And you can open up the boots of abandoned cars to find useful things inside, like kerosene for even more Molotovs! Woo! To avoid running up to every single car to see which ones you can open, use survival vision, which also helps you find other things such as tracks. But to get to all of these places, you're gonna need a ride. Deacon wouldn't be much of a biker without a bike, and in days gone, you're going to have to look after your ride as you cruise around this freaker-filled world. A bit like Arthur Morgan had to look after his horse in Red Dead Redemption 2, but with hopefully less poo involved. Yeah, hold still, girl. To this end, the first on your agenda is keeping your tank full of petrol. You will find gas stations, but as we played around, we found that gas is most readily available in the form of red gas cans, around used and abandoned settlements. As long as you don't rev your engine too much, you won't need to be constantly topping up. So if you're feeling like you've got enough for your next mission, you can always shoot at gas cans instead for a helpful freaker killing explosion. Whee! That's more fun than resource management! The second thing you need to worry about is keeping your bike fixed up with the scrap you find around the place. Riding around the world can take its toll on your bike, especially if you do lots of jumps and, let's face it, who doesn't, and fail to land it nice and square. Or just, like, wolves? So 
you'll need to stop every once in a while in a quiet spot to fix your bike up with scrap and keep it purring nicely. Let's see what I can do. Open the gate. It's that grifter. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. Oh. How's it going? Finally, some good news. Not everyone is out to murder you. There are various campsites full of friendlies around, including Copeland's Camp at Peaceful Lake and Bridge Protected Hot Springs. You can buy and sell gear here, as well as get your bike fixed and filled up at Mechanics, or head over to the Bounties stand to sell off various bits of freakers that you've collected and swap them for rewards. Mmm, swarm it is. Blech but they aren't the only bounties you can collect at camps. Each will have a spread of bounty missions, sending you off to take out people in the world in return for better rewards and proof of your loyalty. He's gotta be up on that tower. Not all targets are to be taken out. Some are just to be taken back. To the safety of camp, that is, like this young girl Lisa you find surviving on her own. Don't be afraid. Uh, I'm not gonna hurt you. Are you alone? Is there uh, anyone else with you? Help her out of danger and the Hot Springs camp will be rightfully grateful, but not until after you deal with this massive bear! Oh my god! Anyway, so there are a few ways you'll survive, or at least try to survive, in Days Gone. Are you intrigued by this game? Are you freaked out by the Freakers? Let us know in the comments below, and do be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button for more Days Gone info in future. Cheers for watching. Bye! Hey! <laughs> hey! Hold on tight.